I'm sitting here with my daughter and we're sewing some masks. So I thought we'd take this opportunity to maybe help some people make their own masks at home. Actress Hillary Burton Morgan knows the extent of her influence. There are so many people putting their life on the line to take care of us. And so if we're sitting around, let's just make them some masks. So she masked up when we sat down with her at Oblong Books in upstate New York. I think if I sat here without a mask and on my social media, it's mask, 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 I would be a hypocrite. I try not to ask anyone to do something I'm not willing to do. And I have to walk the walk, you know? These days, Burton and her husband, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, walk the walk in Dutchess County. Jeffrey and Hillary, can you give us a tour around the farm? That's where they say they found comfort that's hard to come by. Do you know what drew you to this place, you and Jeff? Yeah, it was our childhood homes were destroyed. The small towns disappeared. The mom and pop shops disappeared. Everything got replaced by big, massive chains. So when we found this community that was all mom and pop shops, it was so important to us that we preserved it and we honored it in a way that other people maybe saw the value in it. One of those shops is Samuel's, a candy store opened more than 25 years ago. When owner Ira Gutner passed away suddenly in 2014, it was in danger of closing. There was a huge amount of panic, especially for my husband, because he was out of the country. And he was adamant. He's like, Hillary, you tell John, do not close. Do not close. It can still overwhelm me. It, it, it was just really kind. John Traver, who's worked at Samuel's since he was a teenager, was grieving and uncertain about the business's future. I had so much going on, worried about paying for the Easter candy that wasn't paid for and a whole bunch of other bills to have this powerful person who relatively recently entered our, our life come in and say, we're going we're gonna to pr protect this for yeah, you. Yeah, don't worry, everything's yeah, okay. What was really special. Burton and Morgan put together a group that included their friends, actor Paul Rudd and wife Julie, to buy Samuels. Once the deal was finalized, Burton got to work. I really wanted to prove to the people in our community that we meant it, that we, like it was coming from a place of love, a place of humility. You know, I'm not afraid to clean out where the trash can is and like, you know. Redo the bathroom. Redo the bathrooms and get on my hands and knees and kind of make a big dirty dork of myself if it means that you'll trust me. The story of Samuels is one of many Burton shares in her memoir, The Rural Diaries. Published in the midst of the pandemic, she asked her fans buying the book to purchase signed copies from her local bookstore, Oblong. Co-owner Susanna Herman says they sold more than 7,000 copies. We received a PPP, um, which was spectacular, but we were closed to the public for four months. So two months was PPP and two months was Hillary's book kept us paying our staff. She's been our fairy godmother, truly. For Burton, it was just another way to support a community where she was able to find herself. I found so much self-worth in this community that I hadn't in work. And when I'd accomplished everything I said I was gonna accomplish at a young age and still didn't really like myself, there was a problem. First of all, you don't know me. Something she also tackles in the book, including alleged abuse during her acting career by One Tree Hill showrunner Mark Schwann. Why open yourself up like that in this book? I'm in a position, having walked away from Hollywood, having walked away from the business in a way, where the repercussions for me are not the same as they are for other people. Mm -hmm. But we put out a letter uh, as the women of One Tree Hill that was very polite and it largely got ignored. Once we started talking about the details of that harassment and abuse and trauma, then people started paying attention. But we still have yet to receive an apology, an acknowledgement from any person involved in that production. Another trauma Burton writes openly about is the series of miscarriages before the birth of her daughter, George. It blindsided me. I'd already had a kid, you know, and secondary infertility was not something I had any notion of. Um, so I was in a bad place and really looking to put my energy into something so I would stop thinking about myself. That something was a volunteer effort to renovate a residential treatment center for kids. 
the Astor Home for Children. We've been spending more and more time with the kids throughout the, the renovations and our fundraisers. We spent Christmas Eve with them this last year. If you're going to put your time and energy into something, that's it. During the pandemic, the Morgans have been putting their energy into timely discussions on their new AMC series. What films, books, or documentaries can you recommend? It was supposed to be, don't worry about going out on Friday nights. Stay home with us. Let's all be safe together. We will not be silent! And then when George Floyd died, not addressing that was irresponsible. So. We brought on guests who could speak to it better than we could. We started having conversations about representation in our business. Once again, walking the walk, using her celebrity to foster change on screen and in her own community. We are starting to work with a new organization called Rhinebeck Responds. So many of the businesses in this town are on the verge of collapse because they didn't get the assistance. They don't have a fancy accountant to muscle through the paperwork. So Rhinebeck responds. They're giving loans, they're giving grants, and so we're trying to fundraise with them to keep as many businesses in town afloat as possible. Keep the town the way it is. You gotta do the work. Yeah, yeah, nothing comes easy. Um, Thankfully, we live in an area that really values this. And so even if Rhinebeck can be a model for other towns, you know, a roadmap, I would love to see every small town like this rehabilitated. And obviously, I could not go there without bringing sweets back for all my, look, these are chocolate covered oh. espresso beans. From chocolate Spanish. covered espresso beans. You have, what is this, roasted salted Bourbon pecans. Caramels. Caramel. Yeah, I mean, everything is delicious. And when you read the book, she talks so much about the candy. I literally was grabbing things that I'm like, wait, she wrote about that and she loves that. Here, I love. It's a really interesting read. And the message about rehabilitating a town and working together, that's really so much a part of it and what they're doing now, especially with this Rhinebeck Response Group as well. Smish fish. Are you They're jealous, Mish? Are you yeah. jealous? You know, where's mine? I didn't get mine, I'll put guys. some in your office, uh, I promise. Here, we can just chuck it as I, it comes through. I the... love her, yeah. and I really love her husband being so supportive. Denny Duque from <laughs> Grey's Anatomy. Love it. Love